So, uh, my name is Pat Morley, and I'm the founder of Man in the Mirror. The vision of Man in the Mirror is for every church to disciple every man. I remember in high school, I've always wanted my life to count, to make a difference, you know, to do something with my life. I think most people feel that way. And, uh, but at the school where I went, there was not much attention given to the individual. And, and, and so the bottom line is I quit high school in the middle of my senior year, joined the army. I ended up one Saturday morning in a ditch <laughs> somewhere between Fort Bragg and Raleigh, North Carolina. My head was throbbing from a hangover. And I had missed revelry, so I knew there'd be a price to pay for that. But that's not what was bothering me. I was just thinking, you know, what happened to you, Morley? You wanted your life to count and to make a difference. You, you wanted to be somebody, to do something, to, to lead a life of significance and meaning and purpose. And uh, here you are in a ditch. You're just a nobody headed nowhere. And it was really true. So <clears throat> on that day, I made a decision uh, in my own will that I wanted to turn my life around. So... I got the, got the GED, uh, high school equivalency, came back from the Army, uh, finished college. Uh, I, I just figured, well, uh, let's go into real estate, uh, commercial real estate, because that's the biggest price tag out there, and I can sell that and make the biggest commissions. As a young businessman, I was meeting all of my goals. Uh, everything I touched seemed to, to work out, and I was miserable. So in the meantime, I had married Patsy, and uh, this frustration was bubbling up and, and erupting, and I was taking some of these frustrations out on her. One day I was uh, ranting, just, I just thought if I could just, if I could just form uh, the words on the tip of my tongue uh, to, to, to express this amorphous pain that I'm feeling. Maybe somehow I could expiate that, just get, get it out. She had these large tears rolling down her face and I was transfixed. I couldn't look away. I tried to, but I couldn't look away. And after she held my gaze for what seemed like a brief eternity, she asked me this question. She said, Pat, is there anything about me that you like? Well, you know, I felt like I'd been tasered. So I wandered off to the office uh, for the rest of the morning, just stared out the window, and I went back to that ditch, and I said, you know, here you are, it's six years later, and, and you're still just a nobody headed nowhere. And it was true. One day I was reading along Parable of the Sower, Matthew chapter 13, but the seed that fell among the thorns is like the man who hears the word, and I was reading the word, but the worries of this life, and boy, did I have them, and the deceitfulness of money, and I had allowed myself, because I was a materialist, to be really deceived. The worries of this life and the deceitfulness of money choke the word and make it unfruitful. And I said, that's my life. That's my life. That's, that's exactly what's going on in my life. When I became a Christian, I already had a plan for my life. I knew what I wanted to do with my life. So in many ways, now looking back, I realized that I just sort of added Jesus to my life as another interest. There's a God we want, and there is a God who is. They are not the same God. And the turning point of our lives is when we stop seeking the God we want and start seeking the God who is. So as the, this gospel message began to envelop me, and as I became, became a, more and more of a disciple of Jesus, I just felt a, a tremendous calling and passion to help other men experience this, the same thing that I was going through. It doesn't make any difference how we got into these current problems, whether it's poverty or racism, divorce, uh, fatherlessness, uh, abortion, uh, government corruption, ISIS, you, you can name it. 
However we got into the current situation, the only solution is to disciple our way out. Making disciples is God's designated way to release the power of his gospel on every problem that we face. At the top of my to-do list for the last many, many years is, is, a, is a sentence. I would rather die for a worthy cause than live for no reason. And men's discipleship that is, is that calling, is that mission, is that cause that is so worthy. So I left business in 1991, 25 years ago, with a, a, a passion to see spiritual revival and awakening in America through men. I wrote in the front of my Bible, I want to live the rest of my earthly life for the will of God. And really meant it. Still do.